Okay, so question says, SO2Cl2 equilibrates to sulfur dioxide and chlorine. If four, and here's me, I, this is how I would literally do this upper cube in the middle of the test, okay? So the question says you have 4.32 grams of SO2Cl2. Okay, I'm trying to demo this so that you understand where you get points and where, like what level of work you need to show. Um, you have your equilibrium. It says that it's placed in a rigid, evacuated 1.50 liter vessel, aka the container, okay? As the reaction is heated to 400 Kelvin, the sample vaporizes completely. Okay, so it vaporizes, meaning gas, right? To you, that screams gas. Starts to decompose according to the equation above. The decomposition is endothermic. All right, so now I don't have to read that anymore. I have all the information, the pertinent information right here. Question A, if no decomposition occurs, occurred, what would be the pressure? What would be the pressure? Question pressure in atmospheres of the sulfur or this thing, SO2, Cl2, in the vessel at 400 degrees? Yeah. No, this is me because I, I try not to re -re read <laughs> questions. I try not to reread questions. This is. I teach my honors kids this because they get really confused on what they're asked for. So I said, you need to write it down because then you'll never forget. So I'm in that honors camp. <laughs> but you'll see, this is all we're, all we're asked of, given that you're going to four, you have 400 degrees Kelvin. How would you find pressure given all of this information? Thank you. PD equals an RT. That's all the information you have access to. You don't have equilibrium constants. You, don't, you can't really make an ice box yet. You don't have initial pressure. You don't have anything but P equals NRT. So using all this information, we're going to do P equals NRT, and we're solving for P. So do we have volume in liters? Yes. Do we have N? Yes. Yeah. I know. Kind of. You need to take this to moles. Okay, so one mole of SO2Cl2 is, little calculators are going in your head. Yep, 134.96. I got you on this one, okay? On this one. So this is, and I know your calculator is going in your head again. 0 0.0320 moles of SO2Cl2. You must show that work, okay? You get a point for calculating moles. Because so you cannot put it into the equation. Um. No, that it is an inherent then. It's an inherent calculation. Yeah, you, if you put that right there where n is a parentheses, that's totally fine. It's an inherent calculation. It makes sense for the one Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, and R is for us going to be 0 0.0821 atmosphere liters per mole K, and then temperatures in Kelvin already, yay. So P is 0 0.0320 moles times 0 0.0821 atmosphere liters per mole K. I'm writing the units out. You see this? This is how I get my points. Uh, do, you get off, uh, don't you, do you get points off if you don't write that? They will, they sometimes will, they have different rubrics for different questions. So if the rubric includes units, then they will take off the points. I don't know which questions they will. That's why we just kind of see why I do it all the time. What if we scribble it like Then they will, if they have any question about something else, they may not give you credit for it. See why, man? Just do your job. Your job is to do get the best you can do. Okay. <laughs> Over volume, 1.5 liters. Nick just likes to act, ask questions. It's just, this just, yeah. Okay. And so you look really smart when you write your partial pressure with your little subscript of what you're talking about. You're like, hey, this is how you write partial pressure, people, like this. And as you calculate in your head, 0 0.701 atmospheres. It was like 7007. Atmospheres, but I rounded three sig figs because of the sig fig stuff. Yeah, actually, the same, I sure hope it's like 400 dots. It did? Yeah. Okay, hey. Okay, so I heard from someone that you only need to be within like one sig fig. That's Either the old way. rules. Okay, so that's. Nice. That's as of, two, that was as of 2012 curriculum. That's when I took it. I could be I could be plus or minus one sig fig and get my answer already. No. No. That was it's curriculum change after that. I did this in two thousand I did this in two thousand and seven. 
And we had choices of questions. We had like nine FRQs, we could pick seven. But we had to read every FRQ, and if I messed up, I had to go start another one just in case, and I had to cross out my review. It was, it was, it was worse. Yeah, anyway. Um, okay, so part B, part B, yay. So part A, you know these things that are always um, sequential because they want you to use information from previous parts, so think about that too as we go through. All right, so part B, when the system has reached equilibrium, the, par the total pressure, so equilibrium has been met, um, the total pressure, P total, in the container is 1.26 atmospheres. Calculate the partial pressure of, I'm just going to put A, B, and C because I'm not writing all that out, um, in the container at 400 degrees Kelvin. So you're finding the partial pressure of each of those gases at equilibrium. So when you hear equilibrium, what are you thinking you're setting up? Ice box. Because you don't have equilibrium. You have an initial, I don't know if you guys realize this, this is before decomposition occurred. So this is initial pressure of that SO2Cl2. Okay, that's important. So on our ice box, SO2Cl2 equilibrates to SO2 plus Cl2. You're looking for equilibrium values. This right here is given, not given, it's calculated. And with ice boxes for pressures, you can use atmospheres because that's the unit of choice for the KP stuff, so we like to kind of stick with that. You're, you always start off with zero of both your products. So what's next? Minus X on the reactants because that's all you ever work with. You have to add X to products. So you get 0 0.701 and then, I'm um, sorry, minus X. X and X. Okay, now I know you're thinking, oh, I would love to neglect X, right? Can you neglect X? No. You don't really know enough information to be able to, you don't know the K, K, key value, stuff like that, right? Um, knowing this information, knowing the P total and that you're looking for partial pressures, how are you going to find partial pressures? When you say what I box, but the sum sum together. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So all of these gases sum through Dalton's law, added together to the P total. So this plus the partial pressure of SO2 plus the partial pressure of chlorine yield or equal 1.26 atmospheres. All right. Does that math look hard? No. Kind of first, and you're like, oh, guess what? A minus x cancels with a plus x. All right. So a minus x plus e equals. Sorry, a minus x and a plus x cancel. So 1.26 atmospheres is now equal to 0 0.701. This cancels with that, so then just one of those x's is remaining, so plus x. Just simplifying the expression, that's all. Okay. So then x is equal to 0 0.556, 559 atmospheres. Is that my final answer? No. no, I still have to do one more thing. I still have to go, okay, partial pressure of SO2Cl2 is, what am I doing? Okay, so I'm doing 0 0.791 minus 0 0.559 atmospheres, which is 0 0.14, right? I rounded to two, that's what I was seeing. Yeah, but I'm trying to think why I rounded to two, that's what I was I have a reason for this even here. Because the atmosphere is just in two? Yeah, sorry. So this was to two decimals. When you add and subtract, you're not concerned about sig figs as a total, you're concerned about decimals. Do you remember that from sig figs? Mm -hmm. Adding and subtracting is only concerned about number of decimals. So this has two decimals, so this had three decimals, but the limiting is two decimals, so your final answer should be in two decimals. I was just trying to figure out why I did that. So that's partial pressure of that. And then Cl2 is equal to the partial pressure of SO2 because they're both X's, which is equal to your X amount of uh, 5, 6, so rounded up to two decimals. Look how professional that looks, yeah. So in that, where are all the points? The points are, let's see if I have this all down. You got a point for, you want me to do A and B? Yeah. A was inherent or truly calculated moles and then they usually give you a point for utilization of the appropriate equation and 
that, that might be a combined point. One point for equation with answer. So I think the first one was only two points. And then they'll like do like a combo point here. And then part B, setting up your ice box. So ice with part A's answer here. And then setting equal one point for uh, I'm going to say equal P total, essentially. And as you set that up, you get that point with your solve, your solve X. And then one point for, I don't know, they might give you two points. They might give you one point for this P and this one point for this combined P. Or they might ask you to do all three. So I think they'll actually do two points because they try to separate points. And then with that, if you don't write anything, you're fine. It's just showing the work. Yeah. With the ice box, do we have to write an ice or can we do like the one line thing? You can do the one line thing. Basically, they're looking for like this and this. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so then the third part of this, part C, for the decomposition reaction at 400 degrees Kelvin, write the equilibrium expression KP for this reaction. All right, so you, so you guys, tell me what I'm writing. Parentheses, right? Yeah, <laughs> times pressure of Cl2 over pressure of CO or SO2 Cl2. Also the first power, right? Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, calculate the, the value of the equilibrium constant. Mm -hmm. Plug in, plug in value. Thank you. You're using information from above. You're simply plugging in partial pressures you previously calculated. So this will be 0.14 atmospheres squared because they're both the same over 0.5. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. I'm looking above me. 0.14 down here, 0.56 atmospheres squared. And I'm just putting atmospheres in here. You don't have to. You know that K has no units. So this will end up canceling each other. Or I mean, not canceling. They'll just be negated. So this is a 2.2 for our KP. Try, uh, and it looks really good to keep, like box your answers away so that they understand what you're trying to get your points for. So this one you would have gotten a point for setup. So one point for the first one and then one point for the second one with B's answers. So even if you got B wrong, you would want C right because you're plugging in your B answers. It doesn't matter if they're puppy dogs and kitty cats. So they'll plug it in. So how many points did you get for B? Um, I think it was four. Okay, thank you. One with ice, one with solution to P total, and two for your final pressures. Okay. Then we have D. The temperature of the equilibrium mixture is increased to 425 Kelvin. Well, will the will the value of Kp increase, decrease, or stay the same? Justify. You've increased it to 425 Kelvin. What happens? Or what do you know that's relevant? Why is it shifting right? Okay, so hold on, scroll back up. So up here at the very top of your paper, you're looking through, you've used everything except for this endothermic thing. That's where that's re that is relevant. So it's endothermic, so the reaction does shift right, which would do what to KP? Because you are? Right, essentially you're making more products and you're decreasing the reactants because this is now like a new static system. Once you've shifted right, it stays due to the fact that you have to consume this extra energy. Increase in the products, decrease in the reactants overall makes a fraction larger, aka K is larger. But there's a better, in your justification, there's a phrase that is definitely required. Ready? I'm going to say this in one sentence because I had three sentences and I condensed it down to one. And then I'll read you my three sentence one, okay? So, increasing the temperature will favor the endothermic reaction. Increasing the temperature favors the endothermic reaction. And you the RXN, that's a fine um, abbreviation, which is the forward direction. Because you have to state, you know, that for this particular reaction, it's the forward direction. This results in um, an increased ratio of products to reactants, which increases K. 
So that's actually the length here, and I want to see that that works. So it was increasing the temperature. That is something that I, if you say, if you write at the top of your paper because you feel like you're going to be writing a lot, just describe, define T is equal to temperature, define at the very top, you're fine. They, that's one thing that I ask my webinar questions and I, all my questions get answered. So I have followed him on Twitter and I will be bugging him because I need to know these things. It's, it'll say like question and then the next page is like line papers, just like notebook paper lines and just right at the top of that question. Only for that question. Redefine the or things every single day, uh, every single question. So favorite endothermic reaction, which is the forward reaction. This is me abbreviating. I can't. This is not a standard abbreviation. Um, and then you're increasing the ratio of the products to reactants, which is increasing K. So that's, a, that's like you are connecting every dot possible on that question. I know it's really easy to go. Oh, favorite endothermic reaction. Try your best to uh, connect all the dots. Part E. In another experiment, the original partial, pre partial pressures of blah, blah, blah are one atmosphere each at 400 degrees Kelvin. Predict whether the amount of SO2Cl2 in the container will increase, decrease, or remain the same. Justify your prediction. Thoughts? Yeah, Q. Q versus K. P is what this question is asking. How do you set up Q? Same way. Same way. So KP, we've already got set up up here. Uh, SO2Cl2 over SO2Cl2. So one atmosphere times one atmosphere, guess what guys? Over one atmosphere, because that's what it said all of them were. What's Q equal? Yeah. One. So you're showing your work, you're showing how you set up Q, you're setting up the relevance of this. What are you going to write here now? Q is less than K. How do you know it's less than K? Because K is, K is what? 2.2. Let them know that you know what K is because you just calculated it, right? Now, your K, K might have been different if you got the answer wrong. You would get the answer correct on part E because you are following through with your answer. So, K is, uh, Q is less than K. Therefore, um, since Q is less than K, P, the reaction will do what? Proceed to the right, or you could say um, towards products, which will result in what? Let's look at the question again. Decreased, uh, let's say pressure to say male. A male, okay. Result result in decreased amount of SO2 Cl2. And I even even in the like parentheses say a reactant. Like I'm for sure you know what I'm talking about. This is a reactant being consumed as I proceed to the right. So that you know, webinar thinks me about practicing your explanations, practicing your writing, quick, concise, but to the point, not like lollygagging around. This is about as concise as we can almost make this one. Okay. So, how do we feel about that one? Good KP one. Okay. Word. Yeah, point points, values. Point um, points. This one had two points. You have points. I'll do it with you too. Um, this one you have two points. Uh, com a calculation, or at least a calculation slash comparison of Q and K. So, one point for evaluating Q versus K, and one point for the explanation with your decreased SO2, CL2. So at one point, like with the explanation as why and that, it's like a combined point. And if you don't get one of them, you don't get the whole thing, which kind of sucks. And then this one was only, I think it's just one point. I looked here. Probably one point with explanation. So if you, ex if you said the correct thing but explained it wrong, you wouldn't get your point. Sad day, right? So here's what I want to do. I want you guys to do those multiple choices. There's 20, how many of them? 21. And then in this packet, I want you guys to do 2010B. It's the next one, number two, okay?
and 2011B question 6. So I just did question 1. You guys are doing FRQs 2 and 3. So what I'll do is I'll scratch all of this for tonight. You can work on kinetics. Um, sorry, you can work on your buffer equilibrium. Touch corrections, I won't take those up till probably like Monday. Okay. Basically, we need to finish up kind of the general equilibrium before we jump into acid phase. Okay, so after we, so I'll check, we'll check these tomorrow, go over some questions, and then we'll jump into acid base equilibrium, and that'll be Thursday. Gosh, it'll be Thursday. So then we'll do a we'll do our FRQ practice test on Friday now. Yeah. Okay, so game plan, finish up equilibrium as best we can this week. Heck, I might just, I'll just, we'll just finish equilibrium this week. We'll do the practice test on Monday. Yeah. Mm -mm. The practice test, what? Yeah, the buffers. Right. Can you guys find your buffer? Okay. Look for your buffer test tonight because the reason I saved buffer corrections was because I knew I wanted to do it during review time. You guys had a lot going on at buffer time, so I just said scratch that. We'll correct it around review because it's going to serve as review for equilibrium. Okay. So your job is to finish. Equilibrium, multiple choice. Ever use one and two. Fine test. I know tomorrow is her birthday. I have to use at home. To me. I seriously do have them. I'm making them this time. I don't care. They can get Huh? I gotta get. I need all your outlines. Sorry. I need your outlines. They're right there. Right there. Let me see it right now. Like, whatever progress. Extra.